So do you remember Corey Mason? She made this viral video specifically about trans kids being bullied. And I don't advocate for trans children being bullied, just so that we're clear. But you may remember this video like got insane amounts of views. I mean, even this reposting of it has already gotten 970,000 views. Um, but we're not going to be talking about this time period in Corey Mason's life. We're going to be talking about Corey Mason's fate later in life. They're now in their 20s. And needless to say, things didn't really work out the way that was suggested by the media at the time would likely happen. So let's learn a little bit about the background. This is from their incomplete website that I don't think ever was completed. More about me. I love starting new conversations and meeting new people, especially within the LGBTQ plus community. I came out when I was nine years old and started taking puberty blockers at the age of 11. By the age of 13, I received my first dose of hormones, which was another big step in my transition. And I am so beyond thankful for my father, Eric, for helping me become who I am today. More on Father Eric in a moment. I know there's other trans kids out there who do not have the ability to receive treatment or support, and I find it absolutely heartbreaking. I want to use my name, my story, and my platform to spread awareness for the trans youth and speak up for those who are not yet comfortable or believe in themselves. I was taught love growing up. That's all I wanted to spread, nothing but love. We are not born to hate, we are taught it. So let's make a habit to unteach hate and spread kindness and love. Corey's story is still used specifically in schools uh, to bring people, you know, awareness of transness specifically. Uh, what do you do when you were born one gender but feel yourself to be another? Gender dysphoria affects thousands of people worldwide, but has been ignored or ridiculed in our culture. With this graphic novel, Corey Mason boldly shares her story of transitioning so that other kids with gender dysphoria and related conditions will no longer feel so isolated, hopeless, or lost. Corey Mason was born a girl trapped in a boy's body. Growing up, Corey was more interested in dolls than trucks, in dresses than jeans. Everything about Corey was female, except for her physicality. Known as gender dysphoria, this condition is devastating if not acknowledged, but society is slow to be sympathetic to the idea that a person's gender is not entirely based on physiology, but it is instead fluid, and a combination of emotional and psychological self-awarenesses, along with, or sometimes more importantly, physical characteristics. Identity tells the complex and moving tale of a young person who knows that their true gender is not the one they were assigned at birth, with unconditional love and support from her mother, Corey successfully starts the transition process with hopes of being comfortable in her own skin, being accepted by others, and raising awareness of young people who wish to transition. At 16 years old, Corey has become a voice for the other trans teens, battling bullies and helping others who are on their own individual journeys of identity. No new content has been uploaded to this in year for years, but... She had this uh, YouTube channel set up, and like, you know, that's the video that we were looking at earlier, you know, put together specifically about bullying. But this channel and the videos that are on it have been used once again to kind of expose kids early on to what transness is and how successful they, you know, believe it can be as far as your transition. So this is more on the, what they had mentioned earlier, specifically about how essentially her mother decided to become her father. Mother and son from Detroit go through an incredible transgender transition together and are becoming father and daughter. Let's have a look at this local news video about it. An extraordinary family drama. It involves a mom in Detroit with a transgender daughter. While watching her boy transition into a girl, this mother says she realized that she was, in fact, a man. So this is now a household with two transgender family members, and they say at the heart of this family is a marriage that is growing stronger. Here's my Nightline co-anchor, Juju Chang. At just 15, Corey Mason's bravely sharing her transition from male to female. I felt like a princess. She made this video to combat bullying, and it went viral. 
I know what I'm doing and I feel like it's the right thing to do nonstop to help people. Now she and her family are sharing more of their personal journey with the public. Corey's mother transitioning too from Erica to Eric. After a lifetime of living as a woman, marrying and having five kids, Eric began his transition a year ago. I will never forget the first dose of hormones that I took. It was like this overwhelming sense of calm and peace just came over me that I That's actually what happens when you take testosterone. It's not something specific gender affirming necessarily. Anybody who takes testosterone will have this effect. I had never experienced in my life. I was like, wow, this is what normal feels like. There's me and mom. Eric says he was inspired by his own daughter's bravery. And for almost two years now, the two have been sharing their transition from mother and son to father and daughter. So you two draw inspiration and support from each other, don't you? Mm -hmm. What was it like watching her walk this walk? Just seeing her and her bravery just gave me the strength and courage to come out as well and face the world as my true self. What goes through your mind when you hear Eric talk about you as a hero to him? I feel like I've done my part and helped him through his journey as he's helped me. That, I think, was probably one of the hardest things, too, is all my friends would tell me, you're so beautiful, you have this beautiful body, I would kill for your body. And I'm like, I would kill for not this body. Just four weeks ago, Eric underwent a double mastectomy. I was so overcome with emotion. I didn't expect for it to hit me that hard, but it did. It was like, wow, there I am, that's me. This can't have been easy on your marriage. Um, at first, I think the, the biggest uh, struggle was top surgery, um, for my husband especially, um, because he, he loved my body. As much as I hated it, he, he loved it. And at first, I think he struggled with it some. But he said, this is what will make you happy. So uh, who am I to, to keep your happiness from you? It was actually Eric who encouraged Corey to find her happiness, which is on clear display in this video when she received her first dose of hormones. Do you know what that is? True emotion garnering more than 7 million views. Do you know what that is? <laughs> the day you started hormones. It was the happiest day of my life. Why? Because that's when I started to actually transition as a female, was I could actually proceed as what I would like to do. What's the best part of being a girl for you? It's like dressing up in heels, dresses, and going to dances. But despite Corey's excitement, she says these life changes have been anything but easy. Some of her peers taunted her. I would get spit on and shoved, called names. Um, one person told me I should just go and kill myself because... And once again, don't do shit like this. I raise my kids to beat the fuck out of people who do stuff like this. But that doesn't mean that what they were doing was really what they should have been doing. I guess time will tell. No, I'm not I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. He said that no one would miss me on this world. And that I shouldn't be here. There's no place for me to be. But she didn't let it stop her. Last year, Corey's transgender anthem gaining more than 300,000 views on YouTube, raising awareness against bullying, something she says she's experienced plenty of. Corey says she was inspired by another transgender girl, Jazz Jennings, the now reality star, one of the youngest girls to transition publicly. She spoke to ABC's Barbara Walter which is another person who's recently been in the news because they came out as, well, they didn't come out. They just said, I don't ever feel like myself. Many years later. There are some transgender children that have not been able to be transgender who yes. even want to die. I want to help those kids become the person they are. <laughs> We watched a video of Jazz Jennings, and I told my mom I am just like her at the end. I realized that, oh my gosh, this is also me as well, but I can't think about that right now. I have to focus on my daughter. It was so important to Eric to be supportive of his daughter because Eric himself struggled in silence for decades, trying to come to terms with his own identity. It was difficult coming out to my parents, and I said, Mom, I'm just like Corey. I was born uh, basically in the wrong body. And she said, 
how come I never saw this when you were a kid? I said, Mom, if you remember the fights we had <laughs> and the things I asked for on my Christmas wish list. And she said, oh, I guess that makes sense. Is that repression? Is that denial? I think it's denial uh, in that generation. It is a fair question. How could you not have known? Because I was not educated on what being transgender meant. If they would have said, this is what being transgender means, you have the, you're born with this anatomy and your brain does not identify with that, I think a lot of years ago I would have made that connection. Today, 1.4 million American adults identify as transgender, but 18 to 24-year-olds are more likely likely to go public than their older counterparts. What's unclear is how common it is for two people in one family to transition. Dr. Lauren Schechter performed Eric's mastectomy. He specializes in gender confirmation surgery. In my practice, this is the first time that I've cared for a, a parent, or I should say a family who's got both a parent and a child who are transitioning. What I think is, is unique to some degree for Eric and their family is the, the supportive nature of the family. Despite transitioning, Eric says his kids still call him mom. I think that um, mom is, is an earned title. I, I feel like I gave birth to them, I nurture them, I comfort them, I'm, I'm there for them and have been. And I, I feel like you don't necessarily have to be female to be mom. What's it like to watch Eric go through that transition? It was very cool. You don't have to be female to be mom. Remember, this was years ago. Yeah, but it, there was kind of a sense of loss a little bit, too. Eric's husband, 53-year-old Les Mason, says having a spouse transition raises a lot of new questions. Well, number one, for me, for me is, does this make me gay? No. Does it, does it change anything between my spouse and myself as far as our relationship is concerned? No, it doesn't. It, it made it better. He told me that Eric's transition has ultimately strengthened their marriage. A lot of spouses might think, well, this is kind of a deal breaker for me. But for you, this isn't. It's not about the shell that you walk around in. It's about the person that you are. It's about the person that I fell in love with 10 plus years ago. And because that person now presents themselves in a different way, doesn't change how I feel. My husband is, is truly an amazing soul. Looking at my life now and the blessings that I have and the five beautiful children and beautiful husband, I think if I could do it again, I would not do anything differently. What does it mean to be comfortable in your own skin, in your own body? I can be who I want to be inside and out. And I can show the world that, you know what, no matter what, I can do this without you or with you. For Nightline, I'm Juju Chang in New Baltimore, Michigan. So that was the look back at the past. As you can see, uh, Corey was a bit of an icon in the trans activist movement. So when I saw this Twitter thread, I was reminded of that story. It had been a long time since I had seen this video. But this individual here, Nig Hecky, provided him saying that right. Remember Corey, the young boy who wanted to be a girl that the media loved so much, especially after his mom transitioned out also? He's now 22 and... And then Twitter deleted this, but I understand completely why. But don't worry, I took a screenshot of it and edited it so that you could see it. This is a screenshot of the original tweet, and I edited it out. I don't have no idea how this guy managed to get this on Twitter. It had, you know, um, over 100,000 views before it was taken down, and it was not edited at all. And it was a little video actually taken from, I'm assuming, her OnlyFans. And it says, you know, to finish what he said earlier, do you remember this person? Now they do porn, a small glimpse into all of these trans kids' futures. And I don't think that's true, but I do think that certain icons like Desmond is Amazing and Lactatia, etc., are obviously being exploited for people's sexual interests. That much is clear. I mean, if you remember the infamous picture of Lactatia, that's Lactatia, eight-year-old drag queen, being fondled by someone in what was a public photo shoot. I've shown this picture to a lot of different people, and I even had somebody recently tell me that there's nothing sexual here. If somebody was putting their hand on my daughter like that, let's just say I wouldn't be doing this video because I would be in prison. You would probably ask yourself, where is Lactatia's parents? Well... 
Well, that's her, his mom sitting next to him right there during that photo shoot, all aware of exactly what's going on. Tell me there's nothing inappropriate about this pose. But I digress. So with that tangent out of the way, we come back to the original tweet that has since been taken down. This original uh, was the breasts were uncovered and their genitalia, which is an undeveloped male genitalia, was in their hand in the video being manipulated. That part was blurred out. I guess that's how it stayed up as long as it did. But it did finally come down and it's a good thing that it did. I had the unfortunate journalistic responsibility to try to confirm if this was real. And as a consequence, I had to go down a rabbit hole that I'm glad I'm finished with. But I looked at the images so that you don't have to. Suffice it to say, this person who basically presents as somebody barely pubescent is doing OnlyFans and porn. And I assume for profit, I mean, that's why people do OnlyFans. And the, the biggest problem with it is that the way that they present is so young. And what people do in their private time when they're adults, I don't care about. But again, there's a very specific kind of audience that replies to this sort of thing or responds to this sort of thing. Just like eight-year-old Lactatia or nine-year-old Desmond is amazing. You know, the young drag queens that, you know, you can watch people just go crazy over when they do their shows. Frequently when you end up posting stuff like this, people ask you why you feel the need to post it or if it's in some way exploitative to do so. And unfortunately, as I have found many times in the past, like when I've had to share the Lactatia pictures, people are just in denial that this sort of thing is going on. And there's really nothing short of like actually showing them that will finally shut them up or at least make it so that they can stop denying it. You know, in our Discord channel right now, there's debate about the Lactatia photos. And because I tolerate other views, as long as people are uh, respectful, the conversation is still going on. But suffice it to say, there are left-leaning people who think that all of this is normal or appropriate or whatever. But anyway, um, as you can see here, just with a quick Google search, did Corey Mason get into porn? You can find, if you, again, if you don't believe me, you can go down this rabbit hole. I'm not showing this stuff for obvious reasons, nor do I have any interest in ever looking at any of it ever again. But it's there, and that was the fate of this person. Um, after essentially being a hero of the trans movement, a book about their life still being distributed to children right now. And as I found on their Facebook account, uh, their official Facebook account, things did not stay um, Brady Bunch in the trans family that Corey is part of. On August 25th, 2022, I was forced to pack up everything in my little room in my trailer and move out. At the time, I was living with my mom and two of my sisters, a dog, three cats, two ferrets, and a pet snake. Not knowing where to go was terrifying. At the time, I didn't receive help from any of my family members. Not on where I was supposed to go, nor giving me help to find my own place. I was so pissed off that my mom had kicked me out of the house and gave me an eviction letter. I was so angry, hurt, and confused that my mother and father had betrayed to social media and the public eye that they were a loving, open-armed, caring family, but little did anyone know that what had happened behind the cameras and behind closed doors. However, after all of that extremely draining chaos, I was able to lift my head up and had friends that truly cared and helped me find my own safe space in my own name. It has been two and a half months since I've been out in the world on my own completely by myself. Looking back two months ago, I'm learning to understand that everything happens for a reason. Life's going to knock you down and not everybody in your circle wants to see you on top. I'm still taking it day by day, but I am grateful for everything that I've went through since the day I was born because it made me who I am today. Smart, intelligent, courageous, strong, giving, caring, young, beautiful trans woman. I am so excited to see where life takes me, new opportunities to come my way. I am so proud of myself for constantly being who I am and staying true to myself always and never let anybody else knock me off my pedestal. Keep your eye on, my, on the prize and keep it going. This is just the beginning. Now, looking here, because I guess this is Corey with their new keys to their new place, this is probably gauging off of the picture that we looked at earlier of Corey in the OnlyFans video. Um, this was probably around that time. 
Now, I can only hazard a guess. I cannot confirm, because this family more or less kind of faded from the public eye. I'm imagining that their participation in the porn probably had something to do with why they were kicked out of the house. Obviously, somebody can't suggest that this trans person is homeless because of their parents not supporting them for being trans, considering that their mom is now one of their dads. But again, to, to just to follow this whole situation to its final conclusion, it's clear to me that there's something amiss in this family beyond what would have normally been expected, you know, and it's also clear that there's probably, you know, as always, underlined comorbid mental illnesses involved. And this is one of the reasons why I'm concerned about this. Not everybody who transitions is going to go down this dark path, but you have to wonder how many of these people that are currently being used by the media and specifically by their parents and everyone else to get this kind of celebrity status like Lactatia's mom or Desmond's mom, etc. You know, you have to think to yourself that, you know, just like any other public figure, these people are going to end up exploited. And it seems that that's exactly what's going on. Just a quick editor's note, as I know this question will be asked by skeptics. How do we know who is in the videos? Um, well, at least some of the videos that I had the misfortune of having to sit through, you could recognize the tattoos, specifically this wrist and hand tattoo. So now the poster girl that was like the super sweet, you know, 14 year old girl doing this video about bullying is now on OnlyFans bearing it all. Pun intended. I still look back at this and I think that inevitably, at least I hope, when the other shoe drops, that there's going to be a point at which we all kind of look back on this and go, what the hell were people thinking? I hope. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Like and subscribe and ring the bell. You can go to hy.page slash vradio to support me on Patreon, subscribe, star, and PayPal. Um, I will be putting out more content. I just kind of have to more or less be in the right mindset to be able to do what you guys prefer that I do, which is be an intellectual and be even-handed and um, have a very uh, serious standard for ensuring that I've investigated things thoroughly. So I'm still working on the OK Groomer documentary. Inevitably, that is going to end up being something that's probably going to have to just be uploaded to BitChute and Rumble and Odyssey. And then maybe I'll put a trailer for it over here. It comes back to what I said earlier, because people are like, why are you? Well, not, not regular people, but people that you argue with. When you show them these images, they always want to know why you have the images. Like they immediately accuse you of pedophilia. And I'm like, no. I have these images because I'm trying to prove the point that this is going on, that it is inappropriate, that it is horrible. And unfortunately, sometimes graphic footage and pictures is the only way to make that point because they always downplay it and say it wasn't necessarily that bad, etc. Like when I did the video proving that, yes, in fact, there are drag shows going on at schools because the video was only slightly sexual in comparison to the other ones that I've used. Everybody, well, it wasn't that bad. I've seen more suggestive stuff from dance troops and all that i'm like okay but that's not the point you guys have been lying and saying that this isn't happening and it is happening so then they just say well then it's not so bad it's like the bargaining thing that always goes on when i deal with the far left nut cases so yes it is going on yes there are people who have an interest in sexualizing children and sometimes you can get them to admit the quiet part out loud that they're the, the moral, I guess I would call the mild ones, their agenda is, is that they want to normalize queerness to young children. They don't want you to raise your children to believe that that isn't normal. And while I personally don't think that you should raise your children to hate people for being different, that's not the issue. The issue is, is that these people are not content to raise their own children. You'll notice that unlike, say, the Christians who kind of recognize that it's not really their right to indoctrinate other kids. You know, these people are not satisfied with that. They're not going to go say, you know, open woke schools in the same way that Christians open Christian schools or Catholic schools or whatever. They want your children. They want to influence your children. That's what this is about. When you really press them, sometimes you can get them to admit it. So 
I'm still working on this and many other projects. If there's anything you would like me to cover, please don't hesitate to bring it to my attention. Thanks again for tuning into V Radio. And don't forget to please share my stuff because I've been stuck at like 4,900 subscribers and every time I get more, YouTube removes more. So I'm imagining what's eventually going to happen because they got rid of Neo and Realist and a, you know, a bunch of other people have been really, you know, removed from YouTube. It's inevitable that that's going to happen to me as well because in some ways I guess it's almost a mild blessing because if I start to get big, I imagine I'll get the ban hammer too. So make sure you go to hy.page slash vradio so that you could subscribe to me on Rumble and BitChute and Odyssey because I'm not going to stop doing this even if I have a small audience. You know, at the end of the day, doing this work, it's not just about what it does for society. It, it helps keep me sane. It's a great way for me to be able to, you know, to voice my frustrations with the way things are going, specifically when it comes to people being dishonest and lying. Thanks again, folks.